de sol, da onde é? Estou colocando um outro que não é mais. Ah, não sei lá, eu não sei se não sei. There are really only four laws in creation that allow you to experience everything that you experience. Law number one is that you exist. Can't do much about that. Now, when we talk, first of all, about laws, we're not talking about the type of laws that you have on your planet that are, in that sense, arbitrary rules and regulations that can be broken or changed or rewritten or ignored. But the idea is even beyond what many of you call laws of physics, because even some of these are only germane to your particular universal reality. And in other dimensions, many of the so-called laws that you have labeled do not really apply. We are talking about real laws, because real laws cannot be broken, cannot be broken. It is impossible. And it is these four laws that give structure to all of creation. So as we have said, law number one, you exist. And what that actually means when taken out to its ultimate logical understanding is that if you exist now, you always will. And you always have. Therefore, you may change form, but you will always exist in some way, shape, or form. Because isness is the only quality that existence has. It does not know how to become non-existence. Non-existence is already full of all the things that will never exist, and there is no room in non-existence for that which does exist. That which exists only has one quality, to be. And thus, that is the only thing it will always be. So if you do exist, you always will. So relax. <laughs> Law number two. The one is the all, and the all are the one. And this simply means that all of the pieces together form the one. And the one is the one, but knows itself simultaneously as all the pieces. What this means is that creation is not separate from the creator, but is made of the creator, and that there is no outside to it. Everything that is, every discrete person, place, 
thing, every discrete concept, every discrete part is a part of one same whole and also holographically every single part is the whole expressing itself as a part of the whole. So the second law, the one is all, the all are one. Law three, what you put out is what you get back. Very simple. The energy you give off based on your beliefs, your emotions, your behaviors, the vibrational frequency you give off is what determines the kind of reality experience you have. Because physical reality doesn't exist except as a reflection of what you strongly believe is true for you. That is all physical reality is. It is literally like a mirror. If you are looking in a mirror and you see your face with a frown on it, you know that you don't go over to the mirror and try to force the reflection to smile. You know that if you want to see the reflection smile, you must smile first. There is no way to change the reflection without you smiling first. But you can also conversely understand that when you decide to smile, the reflection has no choice but to return the smile because it doesn't have a mind of its own. So the idea to understand is that physical reality very much is really like a mirror. It will not change until you do first. But if you do, it has no choice but to follow suit because it is only a reflection of what you have put out. Law number four. Change is the only constant and everything changes except the first three laws. That is it. One, two, three, four. That's it. Every experience you have ever had, are having now, or will ever have, is based on a combination of these four laws to varying degrees. That's it. Now, the idea to understand, again, is that when you allow yourself to make choices, then your choices are based on your motivation. And your motivation is based on your definitions. This is the other way to explain the three-part process. Your behavior, your choices, are based on your motivations, your emotions, which stem from your definitions, which are your beliefs. So anytime you are making a choice, it is always because you have been motivated to make that choice. Motivation only has two parts to it. This is all there is to motivation. You will always, in every single case, you will always choose what you perceive to be the choice that is closest to pleasure and furthest from pain. That's it. That is your entire motivational force. But notice I said, you will choose what you perceive to be closest to pleasure and furthest from pain. And that's where definitions come in. Because only as you define what you believe to be pleasurable or painful will you then be motivated to make choices in accordance to that belief. So many times you may choose things that on one level you could say seem to be detrimental or destructive to you. But if you keep choosing it, that simply means that you must have a definition in your belief system somewhere that says that regardless of how painful it is to keep choosing that, you are somehow defining it as being less painful than making any other choice. That's why it is so powerful to get in touch with what your belief systems are because when you find out why you may be defining something as pleasurable or painful and you change the 